The drive from Parker, Colorado to Santa Fe, New Mexico is only about five and a half hours and just under 380 miles. But for the Adra Chavez Linville, this has not always been a simple road to travel, but rather a journey 48 years in the making. A path made possible by willpower and scientific gains. A roller coaster ride of emotions followed by an unexpected treasure find. Deoxyribonucleic acid, commonly known as DNA, is the very makeup of what makes a human a human. It is the building blocks of cells and organs and brains. At home, DNA testing is getting more and more popular for individuals to track where their ancestors came from back in the day, but also to identify family members currently living. The test results often run the risk of revealing rather compelling stories, however, they don't all necessarily have happy endings either. This particular one began with a simple Christmas gift, yet it ended with a reunion that's better than any Hallmark show out there. Uh, my name is Deidre Evan Chavez Linville, and I was born in Denver, Colorado, April of 1971. I was adopted at birth, and I've always known that I was adopted. I've always known that was my story. And if you grow up with that knowledge, you learn to just live with this unknown piece of your life. I was adopted by um, my mother and father who were not the best probably shouldn't have adopted a, a child if I'm being honest and I ended up because of that um, they split and I ended up being raised by an aunt and that aunt became a central the central angel in my life she is the reason I'm sitting here able to tell this story at all um, she taught me to to fight, to love myself, to, to want to be a good person, and I'll forever owe her a huge gratitude of debt. She is a, she's the reason I am who I am, and will always be that. The Adra naturally wondered about her birth parents sometimes, yet for a long time, she had no real interest in finding them. I never wanted to find my family. I never wanted to do that because I never, I had gone through so much adversity that I and had built a life that was so <sighs> full, blessed, rich. I'm a mother of three. I have a, a career. I've worked in government. I have an amazing husband, we have a, a loving, beautiful home. So what happened next? Something changed. Six years ago, the state of Colorado released records to adoptees. And if you fell in a certain window, you could find out what records the state had. And so I learned my parents' names. And that to me was pretty amazing. My mother's name was Joanne and she named me Lori Ann at birth. So I felt some comfort in that because I knew that my mom kept a piece of me with her and a piece of her with me, and I loved that. And then I learned my dad's name, and his name isn't common. His name is Aldo Chavez, and I, and I could never forget that. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I'm a Chavez. <laughs> and so a couple years go by, and Jeff then, for Christmas, because he's really thoughtful and sweet, said, honey, I got you this DNA test, and I, I think, you know, it'd be nice if at least you had your genealogy, your heritage, at least, you know, and I remember thinking, that's so thoughtful, that's so sweet, but I, I, my reaction wasn't, I need to go and, and take this test right now, and I thought about why, and I think it was because I, I felt like it's not really going to lead me anywhere. I don't have a biological family. It's sort of just a, another dead end, and, I, and I, I really didn't need to feel that, so I put it away. One day, 
I got this overwhelming feeling when I woke up, I came down the stairs in my pajamas, ready to have some cereal. And I got this feeling that I needed to take this test. It's in August now. So I said to my husband, I said, honey, if you will mail this for me, I'll do it. I couldn't even put it in the mailbox. He said, okay. So he did that. I find out my heritage is nothing that I thought it was. I'm pretty much everything under the rainbow. So I had some fun just knowing that piece. He was right, just having that and knowing where my, where my ancestors came from. I, I, I think I found a little solace in just knowing that much. And so I was just going about my business again. I had no desire to do anything more than that. So about a week later, you start getting notifications of who your family your, your relatives are. And I understand now, typically that's going to be a fifth cousin twice removed or a eighth, whatever. I don't know, even know how that works, but it's just, you're related to so many people. So they might have a very small piece of your DNA and make it to your list, but you'd never know. But not for me. The first week I got a notification that I had a relative and I opened it up and it said, this is your cousin, Danny Chavez. And it wasn't a removed cousin, whatever that means. It was just my cousin. And I was stunned. So through the site, you can kind of, you know, message each other. And I took a deep breath and I thought, well, let's do it. So I sent him a message and I said, hi, this may be weird, but do you happen to know Aldo Chavez? And I didn't hear anything for a couple days. And, and, and in those couple days, I was kind of like, well, that's okay. You know, nothing was happening. I didn't have to react. Then I get an email. Yeah, that's my cousin. So then I sent my cousin an email and I said, well, this is going to sound even more strange, but I believe I am his biological daughter who lives in Colorado and he doesn't know that I exist. He then sends me a quick message. Just call me. <laughs> so I called him delightful sweet person sat and talked to him it was an hour and then he said I'm gonna call your dad I got my dad's number from my cousin and I thought about it and I thought well there was something inside me that said it's gonna be okay but at the same time I was more I was just so terrified so I sent him a text and I said I thought about it long and hard and I just spoke from my heart and I said, I, hi, <laughs> which is just weird. Hi. I said, hi. Um, I know this must be so completely strange for you. I have no, I, I want nothing. I have an amazing life. I have an amazing family. I have, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm employed. I've never been arrested. I, I have a library card. I vote like I'm a good person and, and I don't need anything, but what I do have is hope. And the hope is that I can learn that I come from a good place. <sighs> so a couple days later I was sitting at work and he texted me and he said, do you like golf? And I looked at my phone and I thought, did he mean to text me that? So I said, no, I'm not a golfer. Um, how about you? He said, yeah, I like golf. And I said, does it help you relax? Yeah. And I said, so I just cut to the chase. I said, so tell me, what did you think when you heard this news? And he sends back heart attack. <laughs> and then he said, I'm going to, I'm going to call you. I'd like to call you. Okay. So, and then I thought, I'm going to hear his voice. <laughs> After 40 years, I'll hear his voice. So my husband, thoughtful and sweet, said, honey, I'll drive you to work. We work downtown. He said, I'll, I'll drive you so you can talk to your dad. So my dad had said he'll call me at 7, called me at 6.59, the phone rings. I pick it up, and we just started to talk. And we talked for 45 minutes, and it was about, tell me about you, tell me about you, where do you live? And I learned that. You know, he's in Santa Fe, so there was really just I-25 that separated us for all this time. After numerous conversations, Aldo tells his daughter that he would like to meet her. So we get down there at 1 in the morning, 
And I remember pulling onto my dad's street and I was looking around and I'm like, okay, well, this doesn't look like a, you know, a meth trailer park. We're doing all right. We pull into his driveway, this cute little New Mexico adobe house. And he comes out with a flashlight at one in the morning. So I didn't know it was him. And I didn't know how I'd feel. I didn't know what I'd say. I didn't plan to say anything. I, I just got out of the car and I walked up to him and we hugged and I just said, I can't believe it's you. I can't believe it's you. Then we walked into the house and we sat down and when the lights came on, I could see that this man, <laughs> I could be his twin if I had a mustache and I was a little older. Like that is, that is me. You, oh my gosh, there's, and I, and I had always as a, as a younger person imagined if I, what would it be like to look into the eyes of somebody that is related to me, my blood, my family? But I'd never imagined that they would be the exact same eyes. <laughs> the eyes that our, our eyes are pretty, the whole family has them, they're pretty distinct. And so I was just staring at him and I was amazed that this man looked and smiled like me. And so we started spending time together. He was showing me around New Mexico. We went on a hike, we went to dinner, we took our first selfie together. We um, we laughed. He got to kind of know me and I got to know him. And by the end of that visit, he said, I don't want you to not be in my life. And I said, well, okay, well, I don't want you to not be in my life. And I honestly, when I, when I planned to meet him, I thought I'll get to meet somebody that you know, it's what I wanted. I wanted to meet him and know that I came from a good place. I didn't know that he was going to want to keep me. And I didn't know that I was going to want to keep him. And so now it's been four years. I have three sisters, a brother, nieces, nephews. I have an amazing dad. <laughs> he's kind. He's gentle. He's funny. He's loving. And I honestly... He and I had a conversation this weekend and I said, I went to see him, you know, I go as much as I can. And I went to see him, he'll come here, I'll go there. The pandemic kind of hindered us a little, but I'll go when I can. And we'll sit and talk for hours. It'll, we'll just sit down, we'll get a, a beer. He likes Dos Equis. he'll get a beer, I'll get a beer. We'll just sit on the patio and hours will go by and I can tell him anything and he listens, he understands, he cares. But one of the best things he ever did for me was um, because of the way my childhood went, it wasn't a positive upbringing. Um, and I always felt like I wanted to change my name. And the reason I felt that way was because, it was before I met my dad, but I felt that way because I think when you name your kids, you do it out of love and, and hope for their future. And my dad, um, he came into my life and I said to him, no, dad, I've been thinking about changing my name because I want to take back a little bit of me. I want, I want to reclaim what I lost. And so I said, dad, do you, how would you feel if I added Chavez to my name? And he got tears in his eyes and he said, I would be honored if you would take my name and I will give you that for your birthday. I'll legally change your name for you if that's what you want. And I said, okay. <laughs> My sisters will say sometimes, that's so Chavez of you. And it means the world to me to hear those things. Or, for the, or they'll say, you're the, you're the one that's most like dad. Your, your mannerisms, your sense of humor, your facial expressions. Your, and I'll catch, I'll look over at my dad and I'll, and I'll look at me and we're sitting the same way. We, we, we're the same people, which makes sense because I'm half of who he is and it shows. So I have, I have told my dad, I never could have dreamed this big. You're not, I told him, you're not a dream come true because I couldn't have dreamed this big. I could not have ever expected or hoped or wondered or imagined that at the age of 48, I would, inher I would inherit a family of people who are like me in good and bad ways. We're all stubborn, we're all feisty, we're all, <laughs> But I can look at all of my siblings and see a little bit of me. And I can see a little bit of me in them. And I can look at my dad and I can see a lot of me. They held a 
birthday party for me one year. Uh, it was I just happened to be down there for my birthday, and I walk in and there's a <laughs> they come out with a cake. They're singing happy birthday, and I just cried. I sat there and just cried because I never thought I'd get to celebrate my birthday that way. We have Halloween parties. My dad and I dressed up as Where's Waldo, because his name's Aldo, and we look pretty much identical. And we are building memories. We're making up for lost time. And, and the one thing I've told my dad is, Dad, whatever time we have, it won't be enough. But I'll treasure every moment that I get. And he says, I'm going to do everything I can, Miha, to be with you as long as I can. I know that there are a lot of people who don't get this story. They don't get the gift that I, that I got. And so I never take it for granted. I don't, it's not always going to be easy. Now that I'm a part of a new family, we're going to have disagreements. We're going to have differences of opinion and we come from different places so there will be times where we have to work through talk through things there have been but this weekend when I was with my dad he said the most beautiful thing he said you know we're all strong-willed we're all we are who we are but there's enough love in this family to always keep us together and I that's to me that's the truth of the story and it's a gift that I will never be able to be thankful enough for. And so that's my story, my beautiful story, my dream come true that I'd never hoped I could dream.